What is up guys, Coop here, and today we are going to be looking at Harbinger's Illidan. So today they just released it pretty much like 20 minutes ago, and I really like what they're doing with Legion. They're doing a lot of cool stuff, and I thought I would do a kind of like a reaction video, and at the same time kind of discuss some of the things that happened in this uh, short little clip here. So let's dive in, we'll watch it the first time, and then we'll go piece by piece and talk about each of the things. So let's dive in. <laughs> You were not prepared. The enemy came into our world. Their only desire to extinguish all life. They slaughtered our loved ones. They raised our homes, our cities, and our sacred places. You tried to stop them, and you failed. And so you came to me. Nothing remaining of you but rage and determination. And you learned that the things that once tormented you could give you power. Now you see. That there is no sacrifice too great if it brings an end to the Burning Legion. But... Lord Illidan... Demonic energies course through our veins. They gnaw at our every thought. What makes us any different from the monsters we fight? You question the Master. not sit idly like those on Azeroth, waiting to become the demon's prey. We will take this war to the Legion's worlds and prey upon them! Sacrifice everything to save it. The Legion will know of this victory, and they will fear you, my Illidari. Now, you are prepared. Okay, so we just watched pretty much The Harbingers of Illidan. Awesome. I think it's probably one of the best ones. Uh, I felt like the Khadgar one was kind of lame. Uh, the Anduin one kind of was redeeming, but this one I felt like was the best because it shows the story that we never really saw. Um, they're really trying to redeem Illidan. Um, I don't know if they're going to make him exactly a, a good guy, but they've been hinting heavily that they would. 
And I kind of like the whole twist of, like, Illidan, and you see from things from his perspective. Because in Burning Crusade, it didn't make any sense what was going on. Like, there's very, very few points in the whole Illidan uh, storyline in Burning Crusade that actually kind of made sense. It was like he was a bad guy because we were told he was a bad guy, and we did it because Akama didn't like him, and a few of the Draenei didn't like him. Like, there's some dark things that happened, but... Illidan really didn't have much of a story to understand and it's really cool to see kind of from the demon hunters perspective and with the demon hunter class coming out understanding overall like what it's like so like in the beginning you get to see all the demon hunters he's um gotten and you know you have your main character the girl and it, it's really great to hear like her being like well what makes us different because that's how like Malfurion looks at them that's how a lot of the people did and and Illidan is trying to say, like, look, the people in Azeroth, like, they sit idly by and they fight and stuff, but they do not prepare for the big battle ahead. Which I think that's a key point for Illidan and his storyline is he was focusing on burning Legion from the start. He worked for them, he understood their powers, he got their powers, and he tried to get more powerful so that he knew that when the day came, he would fight them. And I thought that was very interesting. Uh, and he was trying to teach her that lesson throughout it. Because a lot of the people of the Alliance and stuff, they look at them and they're like, oh, these guys are demon-worshipping, like, fighting people and all that. Illidan was just making his own sort of, uh, little, like, legion, if so to speak. He was trying to make his own sort of, uh, people who are fighting fire with fire. That was really cool. Um, I really like how they gave backstory to, like, the legion attacking, like, during the Well of Eternity. Um, and having, sort of, showing a bunch of night elves being killed and how much sacrifice they had to make. That was very touching and feeling, and it's great to see that they reflect on that and show the history. And one of my favorite scenes is this right here, where they show them in the process of becoming a demon hunter. They literally, like, they lose their eyes, they pretty much give up everything just to have the heightened senses and the, like, fell energy to be put into their bodies, which this kind of shows, like, a part of the process. It doesn't show the full process, and... We know a few of the details, we don't know all of them, but pretty much you give up your eyesight to get a higher eyesight with the fell energy. Really cool. And yes, you can see there using the eye beams. And then of course you have Illidan uh, speaking to them, and then they'll be like, hey, how dare you uh, speak to uh, Illidan that way. Um, it's really cool because uh, as a demon hunter, when you do your order hall and everything, there's two sides. There's a side that goes with Illidan, and there's a side that kind of goes with their own sort of mentality. Um, there's a side that's like fully de dedicated to Illidan, and then other people who are like, no, that's what he did was crazy, and we need to all work together, and we need to do things a different way. And it really shows like the two different perspectives of the demon hunters. And I like how they showed that sort of mentality in just this short clip. I mean, that short scene kind of reflects how a lot of the demon hunters are. Some of them are like, whoa, dude, like, some of the stuff we're doing is, like, a little far. And then the other people are like, no, like, follow Illidan. Illidan knows the way. Really nice to see that. And then, obviously, coming down like a badass. And they go through the portal worlds. Um, one of the biggest things that you'll notice too is uh, demon hunters, a lot of times they were just assault squads. They would send them through a portal, they would go in, they would kill anybody uh, in the sites and destroy like pretty much camps and gather any artifacts that can give them more power. Making them stronger, making them better, and overall better killers. Um, I, my biggest question is, I feel like with them going to these planets, maybe these planets are still considered to be in the Twisting Nether? Because uh, demon souls are anchored in the Twisting Nether. Um, whenever you kill a demon, uh, they, so to speak, they don't die. They return back into pretty much space, and they come back alive. That's pretty much how it's always worked. Um, I think specifically they learned it from the Dreadlords, but don't quote me on that, lore-wise. Um, so I feel like maybe with Illidan, what he's doing is he's going through these portals and killing the demons in these worlds because... These are the realms that they came from. These are the realms that they think that they've been at, and it, killing them will make them perma dead, so to speak. Um, I, I'm not too sure, but I feel like that's how his mentality is. Because if you kill a demon in the burning nether or um, twisting nether, they don't return. They're they're dead. So I feel like that's what he's doing here. Is he's attacking them in a home world and just taking out one of their bases. Now I don't know which pet lord this is. I want to actually. Demon. You did.
dare attack the Doom Lord Asgoth in his- Alright, so we got Asgoth here. I'm actually gonna look him up real quick. Asgoth. Um, and... Wow, wiki. So I want to figure out which uh, guy is Asgoth, because that sounds really, really, really familiar. Asgoth. Oh, it looks like he's just a normal uh, pit lord. It doesn't look like it shows anything eyes for him. Eh, doesn't show anything for him. That's a shame. I thought he was like a natural named pit lord. Um. Maybe he is, but WoWWiki's not showing anything, and usually I kind of go with WoWWiki as like the Bible, but maybe he has been mentioned, but it, it, it's kind of a shame for it just to be a random pit lord. But it was really cool watching them fight, and then uh, having her almost lose faith, and him saying there's more demon than there's hunter in you, and then her saying no, I'll fight you, and of course the typical pit lord death where they explode, and then Illidan saying, you know, you are prepared. Before he was saying you're not prepared, now he's saying you are prepared, which is really nice and comforting. But overall, I really like this story. It really shows what Illidan's mentality is. He's saying Azeroth, like, they don't understand. Like, Malfurion was getting mad at him for just, like, what all the stuff he did. And he was trying to help by spreading the Well of Eternity vials. Which I don't know if you guys know that story. But basically, Illidan was just trying to add more fountains of power, um, so to speak, for the night elves and a lot of the races of azeroth because he felt like the legion was the biggest threat and a lot of times he got shut down and shut down and now he's just like you know screw these guys i'm doing my own army and building my own battles and i'm attacking them from the front while azeroth figures out what they need to do which is very comforting knowing exactly how exactly they wanted to kind of battle it out Overall, I'd have to give Harbringers of Illidan a kind of 8 out of 10. It showed a lot of the story. It showed uh, to an audience that doesn't really know the story of Illidan. Um, sort of the whole story. What his mentality is. What he's thinking. Uh, there's a lot of subtle stuff. Um, I really wish that they used a Pit Lord or something uh, that was a little bit more redeeming. Uh, I, I mean, I looked up Asgoth and like nothing popped up. And he doesn't really have like a big name, so to speak. But I, I really liked how they showed the Demon Hunter and they showed the sacrifice. I wish they focused a little bit more on the sacrifice and less about like, oh, why, why are we, you know, why aren't we considered to be demons for what we, you know, having fell energy. But oh, that's just my opinion. I, I give it an 8 out of 10, though. It's, it's a passing grade. It's great. And it, it works. But all right. In the comments below, tell me what you guys think about the Demon Hunters. And think about Illidan getting redeemed. I don't know how I fully like it because I felt like that story was just kind of like, yeah, they, they screwed up. But I don't feel like he needs really a redemption story. There's been so many characters getting resurrected and brought back. And I kind of want Illidan's story in Legion to be kind of like, not him being a bad guy, but he will help us. And I really want him just to die and have an end and over with. I, a redemption story is not bad, but I do not want characters constantly coming back because then we get to the feeling of like, well, will Varian come back? Will like another person come back? Well, if Sylvanas dies, does she come back? You know, it just it, a lot of times World of Warcraft does that. But overall, I gotta give it an eight out of ten. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it, and I want to know what your guys' opinions are. So in the comments below, tell me what you guys think about Demon Hunters, what you think about Illidan, and be sure to like and subscribe it really helps me out and i will be planning to do a lot more videos like this so thank you guys for watching see ya